chronic Lyme disease versus post-treated Lyme disease syndrome, which one is it? There may be reasons why you've been sick for a very long time, even after treatment. Of course, there are different reasons for different cases, but we will go down the list of items that are most often overlooked. Today, we discuss the five alternative reasons why you still may be sick after treatment, and some of them may surprise you. Let's have a discussion of the clinical possibilities, and in order to do this, we're gonna bring out our resident scientist. Come on out, scientist, come on out. In this segment, we don't want to get into the success rate of various treatments. We just want to highlight some of the alternatives for persistent clinical symptoms. 20% of early treated Lyme patients do not get better. That's 20% out of 420,000 new cases every year. 84,000 people a year accumulating every year that do not get better after being treated early for Lyme disease. Why is that? Let's take a look at all the possibilities. If you remain sick long after being treated for a tick-borne infectious disease, do not automatically think that the treatment did not work. It is possible that the progressing illness is due to a different cause. Let's take a look. We will discuss these cases in order, starting with the most obvious. Make sure that you watch the entire episode to find out everything you need to know. If you've had Lyme disease in the past, and you have ongoing clinical symptoms, maybe you need to be tested or tested again for co-infections. Co-infections or other tick-borne diseases can be bacteria, viruses, or parasites. All of these require different types of treatment. Lyme requires one type of antibiotics, while other bacteria may require other types of antibiotics. You may need an anti-malarial to treat one of the tick-transmitted parasites called Babesia. With viruses, there are no treatments. Also, having additional tick-borne diseases makes treating Lyme harder. Studies have shown that having more than one tick-borne disease makes treating all of them that much harder and complicated. It may not be as simple as a 30-day course of one type of antibiotic, especially if the disease has disseminated or spread throughout your body. Having these diseases undiagnosed can be keeping you very sick as they progress, and they're extremely dangerous. A lot of co-infections can be deadly. The other alternative is that Lyme or another co-infection has triggered a secondary disease. Yeah, that's possible, that can happen. Yeah. What are secondary diseases? Secondary diseases are a disease that follows or results from an earlier disease. I don't say. It is relatively common that both bacterial and viral agents result in triggered secondary and autoimmune diseases. Treatment for Lyme disease may or may not have worked. This is why testing for all possible alternatives is so important. In some cases, only the symptoms may be treated, and the underlying secondary autoimmune issue may never be cured. Major fail. This is considered a permanent new disease caused by Lyme disease. You may not be getting the proper treatment that you need if one of these new diseases has not been diagnosed. I mean, if you have cardiac Lyme, don't you think you need to be treated for that? If you have a new triggered neurodegenerative disease, don't you think you need to be treated for that? If you now have Lyme arthritis and not just arthralgia, which is causing arthritis-like pain, don't you think you need to be treated for that? Some patients and doctors attribute ongoing clinical symptoms to Lyme disease, which is the easy answer. That's crazy. That's insane. Insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain. Insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain. Loco. I'm going the loco, man. So many people don't even think about the next reason on our list. Let's check it out. Some portion of the 20% of people who remain sick might have a genetic factor responsible for their ongoing symptoms. Say what? Research suggests that cases of persistent arthritis are caused by a genetic variation in the patient's DNA. This variation is in the human leukocyte antigen complex, which regulates the immune system. Now I can't right. stop laughing <laughs> about the human leukocyte antigen. Isn't it funny? <laughs> Well, well, tell me what's funny about it. This variation, the human leukocyte antigen. That's pretty funny. There may be other genes that explain other persistent symptoms. What kind of genes? Like Levi's or Abercrombie and Fitch? I think more designer genes. Oh, like 
Um, Dolce and Gabbana. Are they into genetic engineering? Dolce and Gabbana? I don't know, but I do know they made jeans. I think they published an article on genetic engineering. Mm. Dolce and Gabbana. Oh, PhD. Yeah. MD, PhD. <laughs> Dolce and Gabbana. <laughs> The medication that you're taking may not be the right one. How so? Are you on doxycycline? For how long? Doxycycline is a tetracycline, which means it just inhibits the bacterial growth. It sterilizes the bacterial colonies to keep it from spreading. Think of it more like a birth control for the bacteria. It does not kill the bacteria, which is very important to understand. This is why you may also need a cephalosporin. 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 That's just like to say that. Yeah, it's a it's a good word. It's mm. nice. Cephalosporin. Cephalosporin. Yeah, that's good. Cephalosporins are antibiotics that are related to penicillin. They actually destroy the outer protein of the bacterial wall, which then in turn kills the bacteria. Pharmacokinetics. It's really simple. This is a big deal if you have the bacteria spread into your system because a tetracycline will not be able to sterilize all those bacteria. And especially true if you take a short course and it has been more than four to six weeks since transmission and initial infection. True that, true that, true, true, true that. Because of these reasons, antibiotics don't work for everyone in every case. Also, not taking antibiotics at all means that you will never get better. Never, ever, 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 ever get better. Just as herbs are not a cure for meningitis, tuberculosis, and syphilis, herbs will not cure your Lyme disease. Lyme disease is a serious bacterial infection, and if you do not properly treat it with antibiotics, it will continue to progress, and you will never, ever get better. But wait, there's more. We have one more reason of why you can still be sick after treatment for Lyme disease. If you have gone through differential diagnosis and have eliminated the possibility of secondary diseases and co-infections and are still experiencing clinical symptoms, you may have permanent damage from Lyme disease or one of the co-infections. Permanent damage can be neurological and arthritic in nature, such as nerve damage, demyelination, and permanent inflammation in particular joints. That's some serious shit right there. That's why you need to treat it properly. This damage does not heal after successful treatment. It is permanent. That means even after your diseases are gone, you can still have that damage to your body forever. It's very possible that that is what's causing your clinical symptoms. Do not attribute your symptoms as only coming from Lyme and do not disregard the other options that we discussed. It may be any one of these factors or a combination of these factors keeping a patient sick. It is possible you no longer have Lyme disease but are sick from one of these other alternatives or you have relapsed or have been reinfected by another tick bite. It's also very possible that you still have Lyme disease and secondary diseases or co-infections are exacerbating your condition. We're not trying to tell you that your symptoms are not coming from Lyme disease, we're just trying to tell you that there may be more going on that your doctor is overlooking. If your doctors are attributing your clinical symptoms to Lyme disease or post-treated Lyme disease syndrome without a full diagnostic workup, you may need to find other doctors that know what they're doing. Each bodily system with symptoms needs to be investigated by a doctor who specializes in that system. And all damage done needs to be fully documented in your medical file so you can get proper treatment. We want you to be better. Nobody wants to be sick. Infectious diseases are tricky. Sometimes they can be easy to treat and sometimes they can be more complicated. Lyme disease can affect any and all systems in your body. Remember to consider alternative explanations of continuing symptoms. Make sure your doctor understands the limitations of science and that they explore all possibilities of why you're not getting better. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and follow us on social media for important information on protecting you and your family from dangerous tick bites.